If you are looking to send emails automatically with Python, this tutorial will take you a long way. You'll learn from the basics to advanced with examples. We'll use Gmail, but you can extend the concept to other email service providers as well. By the end, you'll be able to connect securely to your email's SMTP server, then send simple plain text emails, as well as fancy HTML content emails with attachments, all using Python. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Justin. Welcome to Just Into Data, where data science materials are shared and made simpler for you. Before coding, we strongly suggest you to create a new Gmail account. There's a couple of reasons. For example, you don't want to expose your login information accidentally. Plus, the easiest way to allow access from Python to your Gmail account is to modify its security settings. So having a new account lets you focus on learning rather than the security of your account. So here are the simple two steps to set up your test Gmail account. First, create a new Gmail account by following these instructions. Then within this new account, you need to go to this page, myaccount.google.com slash less secure apps. I'll put a link in the description of the video. Here has an option, allow less secure apps. So by default, this is off. Please turn this on for your test account. This gives Python access to your account. If you don't change the setting, you'll get an error message when connecting to your account with Python. Now with your Gmail test account set up, we are ready to send emails using Python. Let's start from the most basic email with only plain text. I'm using JupyterLab. You can see the Python code in this cell. Let's look at it line by line. At the top, we import the necessary libraries. These are the two foundation Python modules for sending emails, SMTP lib and SSL. To fully understand them, you need a lot of background knowledge. But don't worry, in this tutorial, you only need to know them at a high level. So this SMTP lib module allows Python to use a standard protocol to send emails reliably and efficiently. Such protocol is called SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. It is an internet standard communication protocol for electronic mail transmission. While this module, SSL, provides us access to the TLS encryption and peer authentication facilities. In short, such a protocol makes our communications over the computer network more secure. Though these two modules helps us connect securely to Gmail's SMTP server and send an email message through it. Then below, we set up a few variables for the email. Email from, holds the sender's email address, password holds the sender's email password, while email to holds the receiver's email address. I've created these two emails for testing, which have been deleted by now. So please make sure to replace these with your own email addresses and password. The email string variable holds a plain text email message. This is a test email sent by Python. You can change it to other text as you like. After these variables, this is the main code to send email via Python. First, we create a secure default settings context. We use the SSL modules create default context function to return a new SSL context object with default security settings. This ensures our communication with the mailbox server is encrypted and secure. We call this object context. Then using such context, we connect to Gmail's SMTP outgoing mail server. We use the SMTP lib modules SMTP SSL function. Within the function, we put the information about Gmail's SMTP server. The server is smtp.gmail.com. Port is 465, and context using the previous variable context we've set up. You can find out about Gmail's SMTP server and port information on the official documentation under this tab which I'll put a link in the video description as well. If you're using a different email service, please look up and switch to their information. Also, notice that we use the with statement to connect so that the connection automatically quits when the with statement exits. Within this connection, we provide Gmail's login information with the variables of email from and password that we've set up above. And use this send mail method to send an email. So we're sending email from this email from address 
to the email to address with the email message as a text stored in email string. So we're going to send a plain text email through Gmail with Python. Let's run it. After running successfully, you should get an email in your receiver mailbox. Let's open it. You can see the text message. This is a test email sent by Python. Nice, you've sent your first email using Python. Also, if you click the small arrow to expand the details, you can see that the security says standard encryption TLS. This confirms that we've sent the message via a secure connection. Back to the message, you might have noticed this first email we've sent has no subject. Also, the to field that usually shows a recipient's email address is empty. We can add both by changing the email message. Moreover, what if we want to send to multiple email addresses? Let's add them as well. We'll modify based on the previous code. So we still want to send the same plain text message, but to multiple recipients with subject and two fields. We still import SMTP lib and SSL modules and still send from the same email address and password. Well, since we want multiple recipient addresses, we have to change this email too. We can add multiple addresses as a list. Say besides just Python email two, we can add one more address, just Python email at gmail.com, which actually is just the sender's email address. But of course you can test with different email addresses. Again, please change this to your email addresses so you can actually receive the test emails. Next, we still want to add the subject and two fields to the email. Where should we do that? To keep things simple, we can add them to this variable of email message string. Right now, we only ask it to show a Python string of text, which was shown as a body of email. We'll change it to a pair of triple quote string, which is a multi-line string. This is because we must have the subject, to, and email message on separate lines. We can add subject, colon, a plain text email. So this string will be the subject. Then enter to go to the next line. We can add the to field. Again, as we've seen in the previous example, even though we've set up the receiver email address, Python does not automatically show the recipient emails in the to field. We must set it manually. So let's add to the to field a string of comma, then the join method with argument as a variable email2. This joins all the recipient emails stored in email2 using the comma as a separator. We can try to print this out. Let's copy email2 and the join statement to a new cell and run it. There, it returns the two email addresses set up in the email2 variable separated by a comma. This will be shown in the to field of the email. Now back to the code. Because we are referencing a variable of email to, we need to make this whole string an f string, and then use the curly brackets to insert this expression. Again, this variable email string is set as a multi-line f string, with the first line setting the subject of the email, next line setting the to field of the email, followed by the message of the email. And that's it. The code below remains the same. We still create an SSL context, then connect to the Gmail's SMTP server. The login information is the same, and send mail still takes in the same variables as the arguments. But now the email to is a list of two email addresses, so multiple recipients, and the email string variable is set up as a multi-line string with the subject and two fields. After running successfully, you should see an email like this in all of the recipients email set by you. The email should have the subject as a plain text email and two field as a recipient addresses set by you. Great, you successfully sent a plain text email with subject and two fields to multiple addresses. While plain text emails are good to share some information, we often want to add more to an email. For example, 
We might want to format the text with HTML so that it's easier for the recipients to read, or we might want to add more content to the email, such as a PDF document. To include HTML content in attachments, we'll use another Python module called Email. This library makes managing email messages easier. We don't have to know all the details behind the scenes when constructing these complicated emails. More specifically, we'll use the email.mime module to build more fancy emails. MIME, the multi-purpose internet mail extensions standard emails. Before writing the code, let's look at the general procedure of creating a MIME email in our examples. First, we create a basic MIME multi-part class. On this multi-part class object, we can attach more subparts. So then, we attach different extra MIME classes to it. For example, we can attach a MIME text with the email message or a MIME application with attachments. Don't worry, you'll see examples soon. Let's look at a simple MIME email example. Here's the code. To save us time, I won't type the code in the video, but we'll go through it line by line. First, we import modules. Besides SMTP lib and SSL, we also need some functions to create MIME subclasses from email.mime module. For this example, we'll use a multi-part class as well as a text class. We also import the pandas library. This is only to include the current date in the subject of the email. So the pandas library is optional for sending emails. Then we define the HTML document. HTML is a standard markup language for web pages, so there's lots of content and formatting we can do with HTML. But here, we only include a simple document with an H1 heading and a paragraph. But you can include other elements such as table or style the document more. Then, same as the examples before, we set up a few variables to store the email addresses and password. Again, please replace these with your own information. Please note that you can also include multiple recipients as a list here in the email too, same as before. This line of code is just generating today's date, which we'll include in the email subject. It is handy to know the date of the report when we're sending emails. Next, we start building the email. As described earlier, we first create a MIME multipart class and call it email message and set up its from, to, and subject fields. So from is an email from variable. To is an email to variable. While subject is a string containing today's date. As you can see, the email.mime module makes it easier to set up the from, to, and subject field separately. We don't have to put each field on a separate line in the message string anymore. Now, with the multi-part class of email message, we can attach extra subparts to it. In this example, we attach a variable HTML document defined earlier as a MIME text HTML content type. Note that the default content type is plain, which won't render the HTML document properly. So we need this HTML argument here. Before sending the message, we also need to convert the email message as a string Call it email string. Finally, we can connect to the Gmail SMTP server and send the email, the same as before. That's it. Let's run it. After running the code, you should receive an email like this. As you can see, the text is better formatted. This is the H1 heading, and this is a paragraph. Again, here we've only included simple HTML but you can modify the HTML document to include more styling and other elements as well. All right, now you've successfully sent your first HTML content email. Another common task is to add attachment documents to the email. We can certainly do that in Python too. Let's go back to the previous example code and modify based on it. So first of all, besides these, the SMTP lib, SSL, multipart, and text, we also need to import another MIME subclass. Let's add from email.mime application, import the MIME application subclass. This MIME application subclass can be used for holding attachments. 
So a quick recap. We'll be using three MIME subclasses, starting with multipart, then we can attach to it MIME text with HTML document and MIME application with attachments. All right, we'll keep the HTML document the same. Then here, we define a function called attach file to email. I'll just paste it here as it's a lot of code. Adding attachments to the email is not easy, so we've written this procedure as a function for convenience. Let's see what this function does. It takes in two parameters, email message and file name. The email message could be a MIME multipart class that we'll be attaching the files to, while the file name specifies the location or name of the file for the attachments. So first, the function opens the attachment file for reading in binary mode and make it a MIME application class. As mentioned earlier, the application class will be used to hold the attachment. Then the function adds header to the attachments. This will be used as the attachment name displayed in the email. At the end, the function attaches the file to the message. Nice. So this function can add attachments to the email. Then these few lines of code stay the same. Still have these variables specifying the email addresses and so on. These are the same too. Still setting up the multipart class with from, to, and subject. As well as attach a MIME text class of the HTML document to it. Then to add the attachment, we need to attach it to this email message multipart as well. And of course, we use a function attach file to email that we've set up. So we're applying the function to attach three documents here. We specified the email message as a part they will be attached to, as well as their file names. In this example, we're attaching a PNG file, an Excel file, and a PDF file. These are the files that we created if you followed our generating reports with Python tutorial. I'll put a link to that tutorial in the description. Please check out if you're interested. But you can definitely attach your own files. Please make sure they are saved on the current working directory if you don't want to specify the path. And that's it. Let's run it. Then you should be able to receive an email like this with the attachment files of your choice. You can see that the attachment names are the same as their file names. This is great. One more thing to add. If you want to include an image in the email message, like this, with a chart here, you need to include it as an IMG element in the HTML content. But the email sent using Python doesn't render the image without extra processing. So if you're interested in doing this, please check out our article with an example for this. I'll put a link in the description of this video. That's it. In this tutorial, you've learned how to send emails using Python from the most basic plain text emails to more fancy HTML emails with attachments. Hope you can now automatically send emails via Python. Did you learn something new in this video? If so, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below this video right now. If you're interested in more data science tutorials and courses, please head over to our website, justintodata.com. Thank you and see you in the next video.